Good day, fellow investors. Over the last few years, gold went from almost 1000 to now surpassing $2,000 per ounce. However, gold miners didn't do as good as gold. And now the question is, with the next jump in money printing, when gold might go to four or 5000 that we'll also discuss in this video, the question is whether gold miners will give you the same benefit or there is something absolutely wrong with gold miners. So we did a few videos on Newmont in the past and there were a lot of comments now last few days as Newman is crashing again. I didn't feel well with that strategy, the Ray Dalio all weather gold exposure strategy. So I closed that one in October 27, 2023. And that was a good sensation as it is down 23% since. However, I want to discuss here gold, the price projections and potential for gold going forward, then how gold gold miners could fit a portfolio and also discuss Barrick and Newmont as a gold miners analysis to give a, then a gold investing risk and reward conclusion from the current perspective. If you enjoyed this video, please click that like button and let's start with gold. If we look at gold prices, those were hovering around 284, I think, in the early 2000s during the dot-com bubble. Everyone was crazy about internet stocks. They hated gold. And since then, gold has made a 10x, almost a 10x here. But now we can say that, okay, we are around a 10x. Do you want to see something very peculiar? This is the Fed's balance sheet from 2004 to now. It is exactly a 10x. So gold over the long term seems to have followed the money printing machine of the US government as gold prices are measured in US dollars. Given that the interest payments on government debt have skyrocketed with higher interest rates and that during 2023 the federal budget has spent 650 billion on interest rates now it will spend 1 trillion on interest rates and it means that it will need to borrow again that 1 trillion to pay interest if you want the definition of ponzi finance the definition is on non-sustainable patterns of finance, such as borrowers who can only meet their debt commitment if they continuously obtain new sources of financing, often at an accelerating pace and or even increasing interest rates until the borrower cannot secure more financing at any interest rate. Do you see a connection here? Well, nobody can repay that debt it constantly needs new debt and higher interest rates make this a perfect definition of a Ponzi scheme. How will government solve that? Well, they will simply print, print more, no matter inflation, no matter what, and gold will likely follow. Next crisis, I would not be surprised for this to be 10 billion if we have two crises, 15, sorry, trillion in Fed balance sheet assets. For now, this, let's say, lowering is going good, but we must keep in mind that households, businesses, everything is still flushed with money. So for now, this tightening seems still working. However, as Buffett told us in the last letter, will there be new shocks in the future? He guaranteed new shocks, ugly times, market panics, etc., etc., what will the governments do? They will print more money. Thus, there is a thesis that gold will follow. And I would not be surprised if we see gold at 5,000 in the next decade. Now, we have to discuss how to implement that into a portfolio to have an effect. If we read Anthony Robbins' interview with Ray Dalio, the all-weather portfolio has an approximate allocation of 7.5% to gold. However, that for sure worked really well here. So 7.5%, 10x, 
10x, that's 75% of your portfolio alongside others. It worked as a hedge during the 50% crash here. So everything worked well. And Anthony Robbins wrote this book here. Ray Dalio developed the strategy here. So it did work. However, now with 7.5% of your portfolio, will gold go to 20,000? Anything can happen. It is also very possible with what the governments could do over time, destroy currencies totally. The exposure to gold has now a limited, even if it doubles, it goes from 7% to 14% of your portfolio. If the rest of your portfolio is eaten up by inflation or a crash in the stock market, you haven't done much from a risk and reward perspective. And there is also a risk to gold that we'll discuss later. But let's now dig into miners. And miners should give you more volatility than gold because they work with a margin. And let's say that the cost of production is 1,000 per ounce of gold. The price of gold is 2,000. A miner should make a profit of 1,000. Now, if gold prices go up, cost of production, let's say, remains the same. Just for this example, 4,000 is the price of gold. The profit is 3,000. So this is a 3x on the miner's profit for a 2x jump in gold. However, there is also the negative side. If the price of gold goes to 1,000, the profits of miners is zero which also shows how miners are way riskier than gold, but should give more volatility. I've looked a little bit at the average production costs for miners, and with higher oil prices, increased production at higher gold prices, they are pushing that up from around 800 to now 1,250. The same as they were doing in the early 2010s and then gold prices crashed and everything crashed. If we look the all-in sustaining cost curve around, then 50% of global mining is around 1,300. So miners should be on average doing really well and making around $700 per profit per ounce produced on average. Let's see how is the reality by looking at Barrick and Newman. Barrick, global miner, just growing, growing, recently acquired a lot of assets 2019 in Africa. And yes, they are profitable. And over the last two years, they have returned around 1.5 billion to shareholders, which, okay, is something compared to the market capitalization of 25 billion. So good. Then if you look at their projections, then you see that they are in for slow and steady growth over time. However, here is the catch that it's very easy to miss it with a statical perspective on miners. I've been watching miners since 2015, so I'm getting older, but also hopefully wiser. I go back to the Barrick Gold Investor Day presentation of 2018, and this is their projection of production. So they should have produced 5 million ounces of gold in 2023. What they did produce is 5.2. So you would say, oh, look how good they did. They increased even more than their stable target. Yes, my friends. But we are forgetting about something. And before discussing that, look at this. They are again projecting growth. Everything will do great, but they never delivered. And this 5.2 compared to the target of 5 has been done thanks to the acquisition of Rangold, where they spent 6.5 billion by issuing shares. So They did hit the production, but their number of shares went from 1,167,000,000 to the current 1.7 billion. So they issued 50% of shares to increase production from 4.9 to 5.5 million ounces in 
2024. This is a great example of perfect capital destruction of shareholders of value because those mines are more difficult to mine and once they are depleted there you need to constantly search for new gold which is very very costly and therefore these big miners do not deliver the results they think they can deliver because there is always something happening and this is huge capital destruction that doesn't lead to that increased volatility one should expect from miners in relation to gold prices. And then there is something more. 5.5 million ounces at a cost of 1,300. You would say profit $700 per ounce. That's 3.8 billion per year in profits. That's something on this market capitalization. You would say, great. So they should be making a lot of money. Yes, but they do not calculate the investments that they have to make to keep production at those same levels. So all in sustaining costs, those are here. Okay, the calculations are perfect. Net cash provided by operating activities, $3.7 billion. And you would say, yeah, wow, that is a great result but they do not add the above 3 billion in capital expenditures that then lead to 700 million of free cash flows 700 million of free cash flows on a market capitalization of 25 billion is not much my dear gold mining friends similar example newmont corporation they just did another acquisition because they want to grow grow be the biggest in the vanek etf gold miners and again gold production 5.5 million ounces they will grow through the newcrest acquisition results include okay from november next year results will include from 2024 also and they have their mines all good great mines especially Newcrest's mines were very interesting it was always a little bit expensive for me but okay going forward they want to lower their costs which is a little bit higher i think than uh barrick 1500 for the total portfolio but with this all-in sustaining costs there is again a catch the cost of sustaining current mining operations and there is a difference i always thought they want to sustain current mining production no they just want to sustain operations even with lower production and here you miss the development capital necessary to even increase production but yes now with newcrest they added and they will grow the same is uh, projected always, but they paid 16 billion for Newcrest and they also paid 10 billion for Gold Corp in 2019. And they plan to have declining costs, of course, stable development capital. But look again at this the weighted average number of shares 535 million. 841 now they are issuing 0.4 for newcrest per share so that's 1.1 billion shares it's a double over six years and this is crazy there are no synergies in mining if you have a mine on one side of australia there is no synergies with the other side of australia but Yes, supply chain and full potential, blah, blah, blah. This is total bollocks, trust me. And uh, yes, they have good assets. Uh, of course, you have the Carlin mine. They have 36%. Barrick has the rest. But despite the great name, also these mines cost more and more to operate. And they say their Gold Corp acquisition was a great thing. But then similarly to what Barrick did and similarly to what Newmont will result of course if you look at the number of shares issued and you look at the projected production in 2023 it was 5 million ounces now with Newcrest they plan to product 6.7 million ounces and they 
did this. They increased the number of shares from 585 million to 1.1 billion for a 2x to increase production, what is this, to 20%. And this is with just the recent acquisition. So this is the issue with miners. They simply can't create long-term lasting value, especially in, in this case, I'm talking about gold miners. The problem is that they constantly need to grow, do stupid acquisition to buy a bigger jet for the management. And shareholders also want that. Shareholders vote for these acquisitions because they want their managers to do things. And when investing, as Buffett says, in 90-90% of cases, it's better to not do things. And that's where the value destruction is created. You're all cheering, swing, you idiot, swing, you idiot. But as you can see here, you often get striked out. And therefore, also the Venek Gold Miners ETF is not good because it represents also terrible allocation of capital, as we discussed, but also the biggest companies, everything is on market capitalization here. So they want to have bigger market capitalization. Therefore, they do stupid acquisitions to be at the top of the Vanek and other ETFs, and that is terrible investment ideas. Now, there is a solution for miners, but you need to check one by one. The last time I thought that it was a good risk and reward to look at gold, I did that in 2018, and then I looked at one by one by one. And I also made the projection, this is from 2018, and you can see that with gold at 2000, Newman had to be at 100. It isn't at 100 per share. Only Franco Nevada and the streamers, they are exactly where they were projected with higher gold prices. But those are streamers, they have clean contracts, they don't run the risks of those miners and Wheaton, of course. So that's very interesting, but those are always pricey from a value investment perspective. So you can check all of them. I will not check all of them because now at this moment in time, I still sense some risk and the reward is not enough from gold or gold miners. If we look at gold, it jumped. Okay. It doubled as the Fed's balance sheet doubled, but there is a lot of sentiment related to gold. I don't know whether it will go to 1,600 this year or to 2,400. That depends on sentiment. Plus, gold isn't consumed. When they mine it, that gold still remains in the environment forever. So I would say it like this. Gold now has a 33% chance to be at 5,000 by 2030. A 33% chance to be at 2,500 and let's say a 33% chance to be at 1,500. Maybe 20 given what's the environment. We can put then the other 7% here, 40 and 40. However, if there is just a 40% chance of gold getting to 5,000 and doubling my money, not with those miners because they will not double their money, I don't like that low chance, not even the 40%, because I'm a value investor and I prefer a 95% chance of doing a 2x by 2030, no matter what the economy is or everyone does. That is value investing and I don't think that gold now is a value investment and therefore the exposure in a portfolio, whatever portfolio, is too risky at the moment. I might be talking about gold when the right time comes. Maybe it will come in the next 5-10 years. Maybe not. I am also following copper on my research platform, iron, and all other commodities that might be interesting at certain points in time in the future. That's what I do. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next video.